for people to settle in. Okay, we'll get started. Good morning, Beachwood Bobcats. Happy New Year. I know it sounds weird for me to say that when we're almost ending the year of January, but it is our first time together um, through Flagpole, so happy 2022. Um, I hope that you guys all had a wonderful break and um, you're enjoying your month of January. Uh, in the following month, in February, we have a lot of things coming up. But we have some really fun um, activities coming up this week, starting this week. And we have our student leadership cabinet members that will introduce you to that. Cabinet members? Good morning, Beachwood. We are student leadership here to tell you about the Great Kindness Challenge. This week, all across Fullerton, all across the United States, and all across the world, students and even teachers are taking place in this Great Kindness Challenge. The Great Kindness Challenge started 10 years ago with just three schools in California, and now there are over 17 million students in 115 countries participating. We're part of the kindness revolution. Even through this crazy pandemic, we can remain optimistic and hopeful because we know that kindness has the power to heal, uplift, and unite us all. Okay, so how can we participate in the Great Kindness Challenge? Well, for today, we have two kindness challenges, so you can be able to participate in this kindness challenges. First is to tell a joke and make someone laugh, and to give someone a meaningful compliment. Okay, Bobcats, we're so excited to see you all complete today's challenges. And be sure to carefully, to listen carefully tomorrow morning to hear the new challenges for the day. And now we'd like to move on to the results of our cycling competition. Thank you to all of you who have participated in this competition by placing your recyclable bottles and cans in the boxes of your classrooms. Congratulations to third grade and fifth grade for being our monthly winners. Our little ocean friends love being in your classrooms, but it's almost time to go. So where will they go next? Be the grade with the most recyclables for a chance to have it in your classroom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, student leadership. And we have another announcement from our PTSA president, Ms. Newell. Ms. Newell, are you ready? Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I am here to let you know that Starting next week, Apex is coming back to school. So if you were here last year, you remember Touchdown Trevor. And again, this year, we're going to have some um, new faces. Um, Flex Bex is coming to campus, and they're going to be coming to your classrooms every day next week and the following week to talk about what it means to be um, leaders. And the theme this year is as one. So you'll see them on campus. They'll come see you in classes, and they'll be um, on the playground um, for you to hang out with. And we're gonna be raising some money for school. So get ready to um, run, cause we're gonna have a fun run at the end of this super fun event where you, every lap that you run will raise some money for our school. Middle school is gonna get to do a color run and K through five is gonna have a super fun run. You can earn some prizes um, and we are just so excited. So. Make sure you let your mom and dad know that information is going to be coming out this week from both uh, Mrs. Lim and your teacher. And then next week, you will have a pep rally where you will get all the information that you need to participate. Thank you, Mrs. Newell. And if you're wondering, wait, we did Apex last year and we raised money for our, our playground. Where is it? Well, it is in the works of coming. We had some um, outside vendors come and they took a look at our playground. Um, Unfortunately, due to COVID, there has been some um, delay in our playground, but it is coming, boys and girls. So we will be getting our playground still, and our book vending machine is in the works of coming to provide all our students with books um, in your hands. 
So thank you for all your support last year with Apex. We're very excited to do it in person this year and have all our lessons um, on campus and to be able to run together. So thank you to Ms. Newell and we're really excited to do this this year. Um, coming up, we also have March Madness and we have Mrs. Churchill that's going to introduce us to that. Good morning, guys. Let's get ready to rumble. All right. So if you guys remember, um, March Madness was, uh, it's an online bracket style tournament that matches books in one-on-one -on -one games, right? These games are going to be decided by a simple vote on Google Form. You guys will decide them as a class um, between two books, which one was your favorite. And then after each round of voting, the brackets will be updated and then the next um, round of voting will begin. This year, the theme is turning points. Some books are gonna fit neatly into the theme and others will take a little bit of thinking uh, from us as to how they fit into this theme. There are 16 picture books that we'll be reading to get ready for voting. Some books will be read in the library and others might be read to you by guest readers, such as maybe Miss Lim, Miss Guidi, or even Coach Korth. I think this book right here would be perfect for Coach, Korth, for Coach Korth to read to you guys. So, all right, Beachwood Bobcats, let may the best book win. Thank you, Ms. Churchill. When does that start again? We have actually started reading the books last week. The voting right. won't start um, probably until early March. Okay. But we've already started reading. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. And coming up in the month of February, from February 1st to March 1st, we uh, are celebrating Black History Month. And Black History Month is an annual celebration of different achievements by African Americans and how they have contributed in our history, in our US history. And we're able to highlight different inventors, different scholars, and we have a guest reader who is actually going to introduce you to an inventor as we kick off Black History Month. Um, and you know, at Beachwood, we are all scholars and we're thinking out of the box and create, we're creative learners. So I really hope that you guys are able to connect with this book. And to read this story, we have our, respond, our RTI teacher, Mrs. Mitchell. Okay, good morning, Bobcats. Um, I'm so excited to read this to you. Um, Mrs. Lim, I just want to make sure that I'm my screen showing perfect. So oh, wait, no, your, I, screen, no, your screen isn't showing, but you do have right. I'm showing. Okay, yeah. perfect. So I'm so excited to get to share the, my screen so everybody can see this story and we can read along together. Good, great. Okay, so the story I'm reading this morning is Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's super soaking stream of inventions. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson, the challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits. Bamboo shooters, rubber band guns, erector sets, go-kart engine, bolts and screws, and other spare parts his dad let him bring home, bring in from the shed, and various other things he'd hauled back from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for inventions just kept flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them. And he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever had graded his test hadn't met Linux. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linux. 
Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux, and as a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation into a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without Lonnie, without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science, the science fair came and went. Lonnie missed one, then another, until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't even been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming, now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as the guy who built his own booming sound system out of cast-off electronics. It even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation, and that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Proposition Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced them it would, he was right. As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we knew about Jupiter, much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a powerful failure if not for Lonnie. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering with his own inventions in, finally, his own workshop. Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test this idea, he made a pump and nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then whoosh! The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful. It created a curtain, curtain swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together into a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work? A man asked. Sure, Lonnie said. Wanna see? Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed air into the chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing water out with a whoosh. For a water battle to be fit a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed to help. He needed help making more. So he went to a toy company. After a toy company. After a toy company. 
the word no followed again and again. But finally, one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water propelled toy, toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself to full-time inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart even the one for the water gun. These things sometimes happen, but when they happen one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have the money he'd been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home and into a little apartment. He was angry and scared, but Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving problems, and he still believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun, if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and whoosh. Wow. Kids everywhere agreed with that wow. Lonnie's water gun, called the Super Soaker, became a smash hit. In no time, there were super soakers in backyards and on beaches, in parks, and on playgrounds. Each sale of a super soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours, all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today. Because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do. And his ideas just keep flowing. Okay, Bobcats, I hope you enjoyed that book. I know I did. And now we all know where the super soaker came from. How awesome is that? So this next month, I'm sure we'll be reading lots of other books about important um, figures in history, and you'll get to learn some more things. So next up, we have Miss Guidi with some more fun announcements. Good morning, Beachwood Bobcats. I'm here to talk about PBIS. So I want you to think back to the beginning of the school year when uh, Mrs. McComb was here with Mrs. Lim, and you all went outside to do your rotations. Rotations was a time when you went outside and you walked around to the different parts of the school and uh, we explained uh, what the expected uh, behaviors were at the playground, on the play structure, in the library, in the NPR. Do you remember doing that? Well, those were PBIS rotations and they're coming back in the next week. But this time you're gonna be doing it with your own teacher and it's going to be in your classroom. So expect that within the next week, there's going to be a day, the PBIS rotation day, where your teacher is going to review the expected behaviors while you are on campus. Your teacher should have already received her new PBIS matrix and hopefully your teacher should have already gone over this matrix that we, um, the PBIS team just put out. So it was delivered last week. And the day that PBIS rotations happens in the next week, I will be coming around and I will try and get to as many classrooms as I possibly can because I may follow up with some quizzes and I may have some prizes from either my prize cart, if you're in kindergarten through fifth grade or in middle school, I may be giving out some prizes related to in and out or Carl's Jr. So I will try to get to as many classrooms as I can. So expect that the day that uh, PBIS rotation day comes up, 
pay close attention because I may be coming to quiz you and you may get some prizes. Um, so look forward to that. Moving forward, we have our character awards for the month of January. And so now the character that we were focused, the character trait that we were focusing on for the month of January was being open minded. So students were re recommended and awarded by their teachers for showing traits of being open to others ideas and different ways of sharing knowledge and different ways of doing things. So here we go. Here are the award winners for being open minded. Starting with kindergarten in Mrs. Bergeron's class, the award, the character trait award winner goes to Sadie Balcom. In Mrs. Ritz Chilver's class, the award winner is Kahan Patel. In Mrs. Vaca's kindergarten class, the award winner is Penelope Rangel. In Mrs. Arnold's, Mrs. Mason's class, the award winner is Bradley O. In Mrs. Uh, Campbell's class in first grade, the award winner is Sunny Meza Ochoa. In Mrs. Mortensen's class, the winner is Jazzy Kristen. In Mrs. Baker's class, the award winner is Sophie Chavez. In Mrs. Gilstrap's class, the award winner is Abigail Chavez. In Mrs. Larson's class, the award winner is Iris Park. In Mrs. Lee, Christine Lee's class, the award winner is Chelsea Kwan. In Mrs. Paul's class, the award winner is Liliana Lee. In Mrs. Kavarian's class, the award goes to Andrew Zerfili. In fourth grade Mrs. Lee's class, the award winner is Keanu Shinover. In Mrs. Martinez's class, the award winner is Jonathan Paul. And in Mrs. Cho's class, the award winner is Elijah Roundtree. In Mrs. Cherry's fifth grade class slash, slash Mrs. Sturgers, the award winner is Grant Hoops. In Mrs. Geyer's class, the award goes to Jacob Seha. And last in fifth grade, Mrs. Guevara's class, we have Olivia Ritz. And now Mr. Lee, take it away for middle school. Good morning, everyone. So now on to middle school and Mrs. Bretz's class, London Molino. And Mrs. Damana Verdi's class, Zoe Leningham. In Mrs. Levitt's class, Gus White. In Mrs. Sunny's class, Gabriel Beaumont. In Mr. Reed's class, Alexa Vanderhoof. In Mrs. Bustamante's class, Maddie Ruedas. In Mr. Choi's class, Alondra Reyes. In Mrs. Barr's class, Will Watson. In Mrs. Stenton's class, Jana uh, Sade. In Mr. Rivera's class, Sophia Gallardo. And in Miss Min's class, Brooke Sullinger. Let's give a big round of applause to our open-minded recipients. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And now we're going to go on to next month. And the focus of character traits for next month is going to be the thinker. The thinker is someone who uses critical and creative thinking skills to analyze and take responsible action on complex problems. We exercise initiative in making reasoned and ethical decision. And this is perfect, especially as we're going into PBIS rotations, because we focus on making good choices and showing positive behavior. And thinkers, we are all thinkers. And as thinkers, we think about how we can make the best possible choices for ourselves and for our classmates and for others around us. So for the month of February, this will be your character trait focus. I'm looking forward to next month's award recipients. So now I'm gonna toss it over to our eighth grade student leadership and they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, on to the book song. Thank you, Bobcats. We hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you later.